Hello, sixth grade social studies student. This is Ms. Tolman. We're reading through your lessons for you. If you do have questions, please direct those to Mrs. Halbert. Um, Ms. Halbert. We are in our unit eight, cultural empires and government, and today we are in lesson two, China and the Middle Ages. We do have some vocabulary as well. It's a good idea to take notes as we go so that you not only have them for the questions, but any quizzes or anything coming up. It also helps solidify anything else in your brain if you're writing it down. All right, moving on <coughs> to vocabulary. <laughs> we do have a couple vocabulary words today. Our vocabulary words are as follows. We have calligraphy, it's an artistic style of writing using a brush. Canal, it's an artificial waterway allowing transportation by boat. Complex, it's a cluster of buildings with the same or related purpose. Gunpowder, it's an explosive mixture of sulfur, charcoal, and potassium nitrate. A movable type, blocks of individual letters that may be arranged and rearranged. Marco Polo was only 17 when he left, for it, left Italy for East Asia in 1271 AD. He traveled with his father and uncle, who were merchants. Polo was not the first to visit East Asia. He is famous because of the detailed account he kept of his journey. He has published, of, he has published his adventures as the travels of Marco Polo. Europeans learned that a great civilization had thrived in China for thousands of years, cut off by the harsh land of outer China. China developed without outside influence. Sui and Tang dynasties, 581 to 907 AD. The Sui unified China in 581. The Sui connected sections of the Grand Canal, improving trade and communication. This artificial waterway allowed the Sui to control both North and South China. The Yellow River flooded in 618, causing famine. The peasants rebelled believing that the Sui rulers did not have the mandate of heaven. During the Tang Dynasty, China experienced a golden age. The arts, sciences, education, technology, government, and diplomatic relations flourished. The Tang Dynasty lasted for nearly 300 years before it was crippled by unwise and greedy rulers. The nation separated into north and south. The Song Dynasty, from 960 to 1279. The Song reunified reunified China in 960. Breeding an early ripening rice allowed farmers to grow ex an extra crop each year. The increase in food resulted in a doubling of China's population. It's also marked by establishment of the first standing naval force of China. A standing military force is one that stands ready to fight at all times. Expanding trade encouraged economic innovations. Paper money was first used in China during the Song Dynasty. The Yan Dynasty, 1279 to 1368. The Song Dynasty fell to the Mongol leader Kublai Khan in the 1270s. Kublai established the Yan Dynasty. The Yan divided Chinese society into classes. Mongol warriors were at the top of the class. The Han Chinese resented their uninvited Mongol rulers. All right, the Ming Dynasty, 1368 to 1644. A Han Chinese and Buddhist monk, Zhao Yuzhang, drove out the Mongols. He established the Ming Dynasty. Zhu opened public schools. He restored the civil service exams used to recruit qualified officials. The capital was being moved to Beijing. During the Ming Dynasty, China developed new contacts to the outside world. Decades before Christopher Columbus, Admiral Zhang proved he could be one of the world's greatest explorers. Between 1405 and 1430, Zhang He organized several sea voyages. He explored the South China Sea and the Indian Ocean. He visited dozens of states, including some in East Africa. After Zhang, yeah, Zhang He died, the Ming emperors lost interest in exploration. Emperors and traders established sea routes with China Porcelain, silk, and other Chinese products became common in Europe. China's last dynasty, the Qing, succeeded in overthrowing what was that? The Ming in 1644. 
a revolution ended the Qing dynasty in 1911 and established the Chinese Republic. Over 2,000 years of e leadership by an emperor came to an end. Chinese technology. <clears throat> Threats led to a major military innovation during the Song Dynasty. Gunpowder was invented and used effectively against the Mongols. Gunpowder is, is an explosive mixture of sulfur, charcoal, and potassium nitrate. The mag magnetic compass was first invented by the Chinese around 1100 AD. This made navigation at sea easier. A desire to read Buddhist scriptures during the Tang Dynasty led to the invention of printing. Words and in images carved into wood were dipped in ink and then pressed into paper. To speed up the process, each character was carved into a separate block. The separate blo blocks were known as movable type. Movable type allowed printers to rearrange characters and use them to print multiple publications. The Chinese writing system has nearly 5,000 characters. This made printing impractical for the production of everyday reading materials. However, it did contribute to the revival of Confucianism around 1100 AD. And here's a video talking about Chinese technology. It's probably a good idea that you can watch through that. It's pretty cool. All right, Chinese culture. <coughs> Construction began on a huge imperial palace after the Ming moved the capital to Beijing in 1406. 14 years of great labor resulted in the Forbidden City. It was forbidden because people could not enter or leave with the, with, with the emperor's permission. The 980 building complex would be home to the Chinese emperors for the next 500 years. The complex was built in classic Chinese architecture. The style influenced construction in the neighboring countries such as Japan. So here's the Forbidden City. Since the Song Dynasty, the Chinese had have admired individuals who mastered the three perfections of calligraphy, painting and poetry. In Chinese paintings, the focus is on nature, not people. Calligraphy is an artistic style of writing used using a brush to create characters. Chinese people believe handwriting reflects a person's thoughts and character. Bold, beautiful handwriting reflects strong mind. Chinese poetry not only rhymes, but much, must reflect balance. Other traditional Chinese art forms include ceramics, acrobatics, and opera. Chinese artists have crafted delicate porcelain pottery since the Han Dynasty. Acrobats exhibit qualities of strength and balance appreciated by the Chinese. Chinese opera combines acrobats with singing. Performers wear fancy costumes and makeup. For centuries, the teachings of Confucius formed the basis of education and government. The principles focus on consistency and respect for authority. Tang rulers embraced Buddhism. They supported the buildings of monasteries. The monasteries offered education for children and a rest place for travelers. Rest place for travelers. The emperors also sent monks to spread Buddhism to Korea and Japan. Women of the upper nobility enjoyed most of the rights of men. They wore fancy head ornaments and liberal amounts of face powders and perfumes. Women could serve in the royal court, and some, such as, such as Empress Ru Zetan, 690 to 705, were rulers. In rural areas, women tended to be the home and the children, while men worked in the field. And there's the Empress. We do have questions down here. Not too many, not too bad, right? All right, if you do have questions, please direct them towards Ms. Halbert good idea. Or, again, you can listen to the video as you're reading through the questions, and it might help nail down those questions. Or you can use your notes. All of these are good resources to use. So, you're doing an amazing job. Fantastic, amazing, phenomenal. You're there. You're doing it. Um, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.